The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Jesus, our perfect example, was full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. You see that we looked at his prayer line. And we thought that there is a correction between his prayer life and his teaching ministry. Luke chapter 6, verse 12, if we shall we have to remind us. So. To one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. And spent the night praying to God. See, anytime that I read this scripture, I begin to ask myself if the Son of God who spent so much time in prayer. Then what about me? I am men the son of man. I am Paba. If the son of God who dwells so much in prayer. Then what about us? What about us? If we really need revival, we have to be like the master. In word. In, in and in prayer, and in, in, in truth, no cream, and in grace, any or doom, in truth, no cream, and in grace, any or doom. We studied that, yes, we have said, Ezra. Ezra was well versed in the word of God. At the same time, he was a man of prayer. Daniel was the man of scripture. He, he led a fasted life. He, he, he was always on a fast. Moses, the man of the law, loved the presence of God. This grace that quickens the way is activated in prayer. And this grace, which we have defined as God's supernatural ability that enables ordinary men, ordinary people to do extraordinary things is boundless and measureless. We therefore need to seek to grow in it through prayer. And much prayer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 33, that with great power, the apostles continue to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerful at work in them all. God's grace was so powerful at work in them all. So the grace works powerfully in us. But I like the King James. It says great grace was upon them all. If we have something like great grace, then we can have greater grace. That is why Peter urged us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our God. That is to say that grow in the truth and grow in grace. So for us to build a revived church, we need both the word and prayer and in Bible. much prayer for greater grace tiring for the spirit for grace for greater impact we need it see prayer brothers it's not just 
a mere communication between God and man. This is what we were taught when we were growing up in Christ. But this is too elementary. Prayer is communication between us and God. That we have heard it. But this one is elementary. Prayer is not primarily for asking and receiving. So for many Christians, you see them in prayer when they are in trouble. Because they'll go to prayer when they are when they, there's a need. Prayer is not merely for binding and losing. So these days we have filled our churches with binding and losing. see people encouraging us to clap, clap and pray. Clap and bind the devil. See, prayer is more than this. Prayer is dependent humility on God. It is realizing our helplessness and asking God and throwing our whole life on the grace of God. Prayer is to fellowship with the Spirit. And intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Where the Holy Spirit imparts our life and renew us our strength. In prayer, we open up for the Spirit's molding. In prayer, there is transformation of the individual from glory to glory. In real prayer, when that intimacy is there, there is a transformation. It, take, it takes our weakness and he imparts us with his strength. And we are transformed. The Bible says into the same image. What image is that? When we go into prayer, we go before God. It is man standing before God. Or man kneeling before God. Or man prostrating before God. Your prayer posture does not matter. What matters is that you are beholding his face. And as long as you tarry, the Bible says you will be transformed into the image you are seen. That is why when Moses came from the mountain, he had to veil his face. Because from glory to glory, he was transformed into the image he was beholding to the standard when he came down, his own brothers were running away from him. This is prayer. It is not how much you shout. But how intense you watch his face. It is not the fasting. It is not what we call prayer. But your ability to gaze on his face. And allow him to work on you. See, because it is very important. If you say a here that the knowledge of the truth said no it's like picking grapes from the grave vine. The harvester. Or in this instance, the preacher. Or the pastor. Or the elder. Must be willing to go through God's wine press where the grapes are crushed. It is a juice from the grapes. 
that satisfies. But the Jews will have to flow from the bosom of the pastor. So whoever the pastor is, it is said the taste of the Jews. Let me just say this. You see, we are containers that receive life from God. Yeah, yeah. Don't throw a bi. Yeah, J and Kwan Efrina mention. When we we used to be in the village. Bra na ye we kran. We place barrels at certain vantage points to fetch water. Na ye the ankre S C baby baby a to me a sons you. Sometimes it will rain in the barrel and depending on the condition of the barrel, some you are not able to drink the water. Because the barrel is so dirty that even though you have had rain from above, you still cannot drink it. Because now, the, the condition of the barrel is not allowing you to feed on the clean water from above. The man behind the sermon is as important as the sermon. The sermon is anointed because the man is anointed. It is a holy sermon because the man behind the sermon is a holy man. The sermon is powerful because the man is full of unction. You cannot negotiate what I have just said. Dead men who preach dead sermons and eventually they will become undertakers of churches. They kill churches. We need to rise for life. It's rise for life. Sometimes when people are putting premium on, change my car, give me this car, so you are, you are just putting premium on the wrong things. Members are waiting for life. They don't get it. We pray that God will revive us again. See, the impact of a man's ministry depends on the spiritual character of the person. The impact of our ministries, the impact of your parenting, depends on the spiritual character of you as a parent. And the Puritans, my friends, they knew this too well. So I always said that these Puritans sought for godliness in all they did. And they so much impact their generation. So now let's pay attention to how the Puritans adopted this principle in their preaching and teaching. The principle of waiting upon God for spirit power and grace. See, they place so much emphasis on preaching. And yet, they converted for prayer and now, much prayer. So, like the apostles, they place much premium on the way than prayer. Let's look at how they, they revered prayer, how they placed so much emphasis on prayer. See, one of their own, John Owen, stated, the first and the primary duty of a pastor is to feed the flock by diligent preaching of the word. 
a edi kan ne ne djuma botai ba ko ne se obe fri nyamya semu na wayen o yakopon emma now let's concentrate on this for a while mo mayen hwe sasemi kakra the first and primary duty of a pastor or so for ne djuma kane is to feed the flock now we are talking about feeding the flock of god se ani se obeye nyame nwan by diligent preaching of the word. Now, these days we just go to church. And the pastor will just lift a quotation. Tomorrow by this time. Tomorrow by this time. And all his preaching will be tomorrow by this time. And especially. People will be shouting, hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow by this time, God will make a way. And somebody will lift a song, God will make a way. And then, they, they just excited, they just lift our emotions. See, but the primary duty of a pastor, he is not a motivational speaker. He is a teacher of the word. He feeds the flock with good food. Paul told Timothy, labor in the word. Labor in the word. Now, recognizing that the scripture is food for the soul, the Puritans insisted that the preacher's tax is to feed their members with the content of the scriptures. Not the dry hacks of their own ideas, but the life-giving, life-transforming word of God. Now Peter admonished in First Peter four verse eleven. Now Petro etu yafu ewo Petro wuma edi kain eti enai. First Peter four verse eleven. Petro wuma edi kain eti enai to chemu duba kum. Now listen. If anyone speaks, se obika asemwa. They should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Manunka nse onyaku pon ensem. Look, I see they are thinking. If you are speaking, you should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. This is speaking. I don't think he was talking about preaching. So if in your normal conversations, you should speak as if God is speaking, what of you when you are teaching and preaching? See, it is worth noting that just because preaching is feeding the congregation with the bread of life, the Puritans defined the pastoral work in terms of preaching first and foremost. Now, Puritan forno because they understood that preaching is feeding the congregation with the bread of life. You see, in our generation, it is common to define pastoral work as a matter of visiting personal dealing only. To oppose it to public preaching of the word. See, a person we say may be a bad preacher. Yet a good pastor. This one, the Puritans will not agree. But to the Puritan, faithful preaching was the basic ingredient in faithful pastoring. Faithful preaching. 
It is a basic ingredient in faithful pastry. The pastor was to labor in the word, or it's, the elder was to labor in the word it's, as his prime tax. See, the, the examples of the apostles seems to lend some credence to this assertion. In Acts chapter 6, we all saw that there was a problem. Peter and Co. needed some people to manage the tables. But let's listen to what Peter said. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. We will turn this responsibility over to them. Managing widows and sharing food. And we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word for truth and grace. Attention. A concentration of minds on a single object or topic. Would you see a deporting concentration of mind? So what you are doing now? You see, God, the Bible is a manual of God. How oh, he wants to train and uh, build humanity. Anything outside that will not be what God wants. But I Apart from this, the Puritans also praised emphasis on prayer. Puritan preaching was powerful in its manner. It was powerful in its manner. The Puritan converted unction in the pulpits. They converted unction. Now when break the anointing. See what we call anointing is much grace. That is the definition of say aqua anointing one is soon. What that means is that there, there's so much grace on his life. So when you are preaching, the Puritan sought for unction anointing. They converted preaching in, in unction in preaching. The shedding of spiritual influence upon a person is what we call the unction. They expected the preacher to speak from a full heart in good earnest. With light and love and weight, kabod, they expected. And he said, "What he said? Effective preaching, according to them, should be enveloped in spirit, in the spirit's power." Through much labor in prayer. Through much labor in prayer. Now, I want to quickly examine um, what one of them called Basta. One, one of their leaders, leaders said concerning the preacher and preaching. That I want it to be projected. And we want to read together if we can. It is easy for a minister to preach in the pulpit. That is Aye. talk excessively and pointlessly. But to preach is not easy. <laughs> Let 
So that time I was telling somebody that what I really fear is preaching. And say, hey, you too. And I say, hey, won't so. Hey, you don't know. Hey, we need you see, when I'm about to preach, I, 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 there's some this kind of holy fear that comes upon me. When I enter into my closet to prepare, those are the times that I don't even want my wife to come. When she knocks at the door, say, why? Sometimes you say, Somebody is looking for you. Obi. As for this one, you have to come. As for this man, you have to come. There was this man who gave a testimony about Billy Graham. He says that he didn't know that Billy Graham was such a man. Even though he was so close to him, there was this day that they were just about to go. Billy Graham was just about to go and have a crusade, now, about to preach. But he needed to give him some information. So he went to the wife. And the wife said, ah, You can't get. Billy around this time. Then he shared the concern. And the wife said, hey, it's a difficult thing. Okay. okay. I will take you to. Then the wife actually was not going to ask the husband to stop praying because of the, of the, of the information. But, but he just wanted the man to see something. Na so na that the man himself will advise himself. So he just went to the prayer closet and opened the door quietly and then he pushed it. And the man said, I saw this huge creature lying prostrate on the floor serving so when Billy Graham preaches and he finishes and he folds his hands like this and, and people are coming and he has won them in the closets already Billy I would like to end here and God willing, I'll continue from here next week. But wherever you are, and whoever you are, you are also a believer and preacher. There must be life from you to the outside world. It is this life that will give us victory over the kingdom of darkness. And if you are an elder or a pastor, then tonight I have spoken to you directly. We need to change our ways. People need our God. And they need life.